So in the last video, rebuilt the brakes and put them on the bike. Got everything bled and all that off camera. Routed brake lines that would have been hard to film anyway. So skip all that boring stuff and here we are ready to mount wheels with the new tires and freshly resurfaced rotors. And it's gonna look great and I'm really excited. So let's take a look at those rotors. And, I'm, and I mean, this is just beautiful work. They came back packaged even nicer than they left. I did all the hole drilling. Just sent him off them off to be surfaced by Tom at True Disc LLC. Look him up if you have rotor needs, because this is just beautiful work. And I measured them with my micrometer. They're all still well above the minimum thickness, so. I'm definitely 100% pleased with this resurfacing job. It is beautiful. Very nicely done. Tom at True Disc LLC. Thank you. All right, and I decided to start here in the back. Don't ask me why, it just, just feels right. So it goes rear axle and on the 81 there's just this flat washer spacer goes right there and then this rear caliper bracket slides on I think it might be better to attach it to this link now at least loosely so that there's something else holding that there we go oh there's another spacer it goes behind that it looks like this Two by four underneath this wheel, I think.
Alright, alright, alright. That was just getting the final drive. Made it up to the drive shaft. Alright. Now we're pretty well supported. Try this again. Really close, but not quite through yet. Let's give her some little taps here. There we go. No, that was backwards. That's why I was flipping that around. Castle nut's supposed to be on the outside. Now it's time to start torquing stuff down, just as long as we go in the right order. So this rear axle nut gets tightened to 65 foot-pounds. Use a screwdriver in this hole to get leverage. Now I think the rear shocks gonna do that guy. Looks like next is the gear case nuts on this side. I'm gonna take you over there. And that's the three on that flange. Feels like they're gonna be kind of hard to reach. Yeah, I'm gonna need, I think a U-joint on there, which is less than ideal for 
torquing things down, but maybe I'll try it with just an extension first. for that one I just can't get on it straight enough to be comfortable applying torque now's not the now's not the day that I want to be stripping stuff out and rounding off nuts so this you like helps us get on there farther situation here. There's that. All right, next is the pinch bolt, 19 foot pounds. Oops. Next is shocks, 25 foot pounds. Feels like it's just so close, but I just cannot get it to, to go. Uh, 
Let's go now. Whew. What a pain. Now I'll go on to the other side. This torque link for the rear caliper is 16 foot pounds. All right, time to put the rear caliper on. This is AGS Silglide brake lubricant. Water and temperature resistant. And that's just going on the contact points for the brake pads. Trying not to get it on the rotor. I'll just spin that out of the way anyway. Before I go ahead and put the pads on there, I'm going to get some brake clean, a clean shop towel and go around the rotor a couple times. A little bit of grease on the pad shim that goes on the back, that goes on the piston side. I'm greasing both sides of it. Pad shim goes on just like that. 
you want the clips going around the pad and there should be an arrow facing forward towards the front of the bike. Both of these bolts are 12 millimeter heads and they get 13 foot pounds. And that's the last of the pressure fittings, banjo bolts as most people like to call them. And that gets tightened to 22 foot pounds. And there it is. Rear is all installed, just waiting for brakes to be bled. Let's go on to the front and get that wheel mounted. And this axle nut is 42 foot pounds. And when I was mocking all of this up before I got the brake rotors back, I figured out that it's much easier to install the speedometer cable into the speedometer drive first so I found it really difficult to get this to go in there we go Beautiful. Let's put this front wheel on. Alright. I 
I've already removed the wood blocks from underneath the bike and put the jack underneath it. And I'll just carefully lower down. The axle holders have punch marks indicating which side. This one has two, the other one has one punch mark on each part. And they both have arrows with F for forward. So make sure these go on the right way. Okay, so we'll torque the left axle holder nuts down. 25 foot pounds starting with the front now it says between the rotor and this front Copper mounting bracket. I need 28 thousandths, but I can see light plenty of the way or all the way around there. So I don't even feel the need to put a feeler gauge in there. Let's go ahead and torque those down. Those also go to 25 foot pounds. Speedo drive's not straight. It's supposed to be up against that stop. Forgot about that spot. And yeah, it's too tight to do it now. Okay. Thank you. 
cool. Speedo is working. Sweet. Time for brakes. And this side is just like the rear. I already went and lubricated all the slide points, wiped off the rotor. Actually, I'm gonna wipe that again. Just seeing a little bit of dust from the towel on there. There, you see a little better? Just a little here and there. Nothing too crazy. Those are 13 foot pounds. Well, this lather rinse repeat on the other side nothing too exciting to see there so I'll probably just do that off camera alright front brakes are done and they're working pretty nicely just stops it right away so pretty happy about that now it's time to bleed the rear brakes and bleeding brakes is never any fun so I'm just going to go ahead and do that off camera because there's usually a few curse words thrown out during the process. So we'll see you when it's finished. That went really well. I had no problem bleeding the rear brakes and it the pedal response is great. It stops. So all that's done. And this next part might be a bit of a surprise to, you know, some of those who know me, but I'm actually putting some effort into the cosmetics. So now I'm going to put all of the body panels on and I'll bring you back when that's done for the big surprise. Oh, and I also put in that cotter pin, the axle nut cotter pin, and pump some of the good grease into that fitting and filled the final drive with gear oil so taillight and 
rear fender gonna go on side panels seat tank the whole bit and there it is this is the first time I've ever seen it with all the body panels on it and everything bolted down and I think it turned out really nice even for being just a vinyl wrap that's just the spray on stuff it didn't didn't turn out too bad all the areas where it doesn't look so good it's because the paint underneath it doesn't look so good but that's the whole point here is to just do something that looks decent for now and then later on this will be really easy to remove and do actual prep for actual paint and clear coat and I've got new new decals for the uh, side panels when that happens I don't have a new one for the shelter yet but this is just awesome so I'm gonna put you in the tripod I put right about five gallons of gas in the tank it's pretty full so turn the gas on prime it for a little bit and it should fire right up I'm excited let's do this gas on
whether it's idling. So I took it up and down the road a couple times, around the block and up and down some county roads, and it did awesome. It maintains temperature, the fan kicks on when it should. Only that one little oil leak from there just needs a little bit more sealant in the corners by the uh, camshaft, but that's easy and I already knew about that. That tachometer does not seem to be responding to the correct amount of revs, so we'll have to see what that's about. But other than that, no issue at all. I did have a little bit of trouble getting it into um, neutral after it warmed up, but a little bit of adjustment on the clutch cable up there solved that right up. Other than that, it goes into and through all the gears just fine stops just fine and I'm just absolutely cheesed I can't even tell you how excited I am this is gonna be my commuter bike to and from work and everything in between so thanks for joining me on this journey this is not the end of videos on the Goldwing. I guarantee that there will be something along the way that we'll need to go back in to address. Um, I do need to have highway pegs to put on it on the crash bars and sometime later on the peelable vinyl will come off and a nice professional paint job will go on it. But for now Tomorrow, today's Sunday, to, tomorrow I'm going to go and get insurance and tags on it and start riding it. Really shake out any, any more bugs that there might be, little adjustments and what have you. I want to thank you if you've been along on this journey. 
thanks for watching thanks for commenting and subscribing any of the you that might have and subscribe for more if you feel so inclined i'm gonna be doing more vintage bikes that 74 ty250a back there is next in line for whatever i want to do to it and then i have a lot of plans for that 75 xl 350 back there as far as um doing it a little bit better than i did the first time around because i was living in an apartment but this turned out way better than i had imagined it would and i'm thoroughly pleased anyway until next time thanks